When the original Super Mario Maker released back in 2015, it was met with great critical acclaim. However, unless you're one of the 11 or so people who actually owned a Wii U, chances are you probably didn't get the chance to actually play it. This was certainly the case for myself. So when the sequel was first announced for the Switch, I was naturally very eager to find out what the game had to offer. In case you're not already aware, as the name suggests, Super Mario Maker 2 simply revolves around the creation of 2D Mario levels for you and others to enjoy playing through. That said, if you're not the creative type, that's completely fine too. There's an entire story mode to carve your way through, as well as an effectively limitless library of levels available online that the fellow players have created. The story itself is a fairly standard affair, centering on a destroyed castle that you have to rebuild by collecting coins and giving these to the toads so they can be put to work on construction. The main purpose of this mode is really so you can learn about all the different components you'll have at your disposal when making your own levels, and it does a very good job on this front. That's not to say that the levels aren't enjoyable in their own right of course, which they absolutely are. I found though, that as I played more and more, the itch to get creating my own levels really started to grow, as I experienced various different mechanics and started to think about how I could incorporate them into my own unique creations. This leads me in nicely to where the game really starts to shine which is through user-generated content. When browsing levels, I was always really impressed by the level of creativity on display, with there never being a shortage of interesting levels on offer for me to jump into. You can leave likes and dislikes on others' levels, and even make comments, albeit within the frustratingly strict guidelines Nintendo imposes. Apparently the word accept is not allowed. Your guess is as good as mine on that one. There's also the option to style your favorite creators, so you can see more easily when they upload new levels, along with a suite of customization offers for your Mi that you'll unlock over time. Additionally, you'll have access to the Endless Challenge, a mode which pits you against a random selection of levels within a difficulty class of your choosing and sees how long you can survive. A nice feature for sure, though not one that I return to very often personally, simply due to the lack of control over which levels it throws your way. The existence of so many great levels available from so early on in the game's lifespan is a testament to the brilliantly designed creator mode. Be it on the big screen with controllers, or simply tapping the Switch screen itself, it feels very intuitive and easy to put levels together, with a wide range of items, enemies and contraptions at your disposal, which vary depending on which Mario game your level's theme is. The most interesting of these is 3D World, allowing you a range of options not available in traditional 2D Mario games, including the ability to give Mario feline powers and drive around in a Koopa Troopa car. You can also set clear conditions now, such as reaching the finish without touching the ground or only after collecting a certain number of coins, which help add an extra dimension to the gameplay. It does still take a fair amount of time to actually put the level together and get it uploaded, especially if it's a difficult one, as you're required to complete the entire thing without dying before it can be shared with the world, but this is to be expected. I found myself thinking about different ideas even when not playing the game. It really is quite an addictive experience, and the approachability of creation plays a key role in achieving this. There is a range of tutorials available, but it all feels so intuitive that you can work it out for yourself relatively easily. The only slight downside in terms of level creation was the local co-op functionality, effectively allowing you to create a level with a friend. While seemingly a nice idea, in reality this doesn't work particularly well, as you tend to get in each other's way, especially when testing sections of the level that simply aren't designed for two. I imagine this was perhaps designed for parents to play with their children rather than two experienced players. This accessibility focus is also evident in the story mode, with the option to build bricks and make items appear in the level to make things easier, with the option to even get Luigi to clear the entire level for you. I actually think it's great they're doing this, as getting young people engaged with this type of game will no doubt inspire some game developers of the future. Unfortunately, the game is slightly hit and miss in terms of multiplayer capabilities. The biggest downside for me personally being that it is currently not possible to play online with friends, only allowing you to match up with random people. Apparently there is an update yet to be released which fixes this, but that we even have to be talking about this sort of thing at all is crazy. Local multiplayer is also not as simple as you'd expect. The only way to do this is by downloading the particular levels you want to play and then accessing them through a separate menu. For a game so focused on sharing experiences, it's genuinely baffling that we're seeing such issues, even for Nintendo, who don't have the best track record with this kind of thing. Playing online with others tends to involve some elements of lag in most matchups, and the co-op mode feels like an ultimately pointless addition, since as soon as one player reaches the finish line, that counts as a success for the whole team, not exactly in the spirit of a cooperative experience. 
Thankfully, versus mode is a lot more enjoyable, as you race your fellow players to the end, often resulting in more intense and manic gameplay. Though level selection isn't always great, as obviously not all levels are equally suited to four players rushing through them at the same time. Despite such downfalls, these end up being relatively minor in the context of the entire game, and on the whole Nintendo has done a fantastic job of doing this sequel justice on the Switch. Super Mario Maker 2 has been a delight to get my teeth sunk into, and an excellent outlet for creativity, which I plan to dip in and out of for many more months to come.